I'm Joanna Simpson here at Fund Forum International. Joining me now is Salim Kawadri, Head of Inward Investment in Financial and Professional Service Team at DIT. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much for having us. And just tell me a little bit about what have been the interesting developments in the UK since the last Fund Forum? Yeah, so um, since, since last year, um, we've seen um, continued growth within our asset management uh, industry. Uh, latest figures show that uh, total assets under management within the UK has grown to £6.9 trillion. Pounds. Uh, when you include uh, private equity firms and hedge funds, it goes to about £8.1 trillion. Pounds. Um, so there's you know, continued growth, we're seeing more and more kind of exciting elements added to the industry. Um, uh, since last year, the, the government's been doing quite a bit of, as well. Um, the, the Treasury, the, the Chancellor launched um, the Investment Management Strategy 2 at the tail end of, of last year. Uh, we've seen the FCA launch the um, Asset Management Authorization Hub as well, so it ended last year, which was all about kind of um, supporting new asset managers through the process of authorization in the UK. Um, and on top of that, there's been a whole host of other things as well. I mean, we're here this week with the Investment Association, um, and they're launching a new um, accelerator for, for fintechs within asset management as well. So there's a lot happening in the UK. Um, we've come to tell a very positive story about what's happening, and, and um, you know, it, it's, it's a very exciting time in the UK right now with asset, asset management. And why is everyone talking about green finance? What's so important? So I think there's a growing consensus that um, uh, in, you know, with, with current trajectory of you know, population growth and, and climate change, that it's unsustainable in the long run. Um, there's great, growing pressures from, from governments, from, from society. You're seeing it from millennials as well. Um, people want to see a change in the way that we invest. Um, and you know, of course, you know, a few years ago we had the, 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 the Paris Climate, sorry, the Paris Agreement, which I mean, it's not often you have such a almost universal consensus on such an important uh, um, topic. Um, and um, yeah, I think I think it's it's one of those areas where um, you know we're likely to, to see more and more kind of pressures for, for us to kind of to innovate. Uh, to, you know, the, the, it enhances choice for the for the consumers. Um, and um, it's, it's one of those areas where I think, um, you know, everyone's talking about it, everyone's interested in it, um, and you know, a, a lot of stakeholders are, are, are growing and developing the sector. And do you have some good examples of green finance? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in the UK, um, you know, we've demonstrated thought leadership in, in, in the space. Um, a few years ago, we established the Green Investment Bank around 2012, um, and that was um, all about um, encouraging and, 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 and facilitating investments into green and infrastructure projects across the UK. Um, back then, around 2012, 2013, it was very, very rare to see um, the financial services sector invest in, in offshore wind sector, which is huge for the UK. I think the UK is home to about 40% of the global offshore wind um, uh, sector. Um, and. Um, after the Green Investment Bank was established back, back then, um, they established the first offshore wind fund. Um, and that saw huge investments going to that from multiple different institutional investors, domestic, but also a sovereign wealth fund. Um, and it's proven to be a success. It's proven to, to kind of, to, 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 it's grown. It's, it's done a lot, a lot of positive things for, for, for the UK. Um, so that, that's, that's one example. I mean, there's lots of other things happening as well. Um, other kind of good case studies uh, as well. So we've also seen a, a series of, of foreign investors uh, list their green bonds in the UK, in London. So we had the Chinese banks, such as the Agricultural Bank of China. Uh, we've seen it with the Indian banks as well. Uh, they all used UK, all used London as a, as a, as a, as a hub to, to raise finance for, 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 you know, for green and environmental friendly projects. And that's, that's been a big success. Um, I think, I think we're now home to, well, I think LSE now has about 64 um, green bonds uh, listed on, on the exchange. And how is the UK financial services and its infrastructure a leader in this field of green finance? Um, so uh, the UK and London in particular is, is, is widely seen as um, the global leader in financial services, um, you know, recently um, established as such by the, the, the ZN um, uh, financial ind indicator indices rather um, and um, with all the, the, the ecosystem we've got in UK the infrastructure um, you know we've, we've got a we've got a very vibrant banking sector asset management sector um, Lloyd's of London the insurance sector which is which is a, a leader in, in climate resilience 
Um, you've got the professional services sector, of course, which is, which is huge in the UK. We've got a really vibrant and growing fintech sector as well, and they're looking to, to uh, apply innovative solutions to, to green problems. Um, you know, there's a whole, whole series of, of, of kind of growing areas within, within the UK that, that um, contributes to a fantastic offer for green finance. So lots of opportunities. Lots of opportunities, yes. Salim Karadri, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much.